You need to do a lot of questions. You need to understand the topic, not just cramming. Because if you're just cramming, you won't be able to interpret if just in case there is a, just in case there is a, uh, a question they have tilted a bit. Ne? What is DNA replication? What is DNA replication? Code of, life. code of life okay what do you understand by DNA replication she's saying that DNA replication is the process whereby DNA makes exact copy of itself do you agree with her yes. okay she's saying yeah so DNA is a process by which DNA makes exact copies of itself where does it occur? Where does it occur? Where? Where exactly do we find DNA? When does it occur? When does DNA replication occur? You see those questions I'm asking you? Those are the questions we're going to bring in exams and then you check yourself either you know them or you don't know them. If you don't know them, then it means that you need more emphasis on those areas where you have challenges. Uh -huh. It occurs during interphase. If you look at meiosis, uh, if you go to interphase, you will be able to see that DNA replication uh, occurs during interphase. Oh, how does it occur? How does DNA replication occur? Yes, when they ask you how does it occur, they're asking you describe, ne? describe the process of DNA replication. Yeah, can I have someone to describe for me? You know me, I like to teach as I'm asking. Né? I don't like to drive alone. Né? I get bored. Né? Yeah, so when I'm driving, I ask you. That's why this is my music. Yeah? My music is by asking you questions so that I also get what? Entertained. Giving me a wrong answer doesn't mean that now uh, if you, you keep quiet, uh, I feel bad. Né? But if you give me an answer, even if the answer is wrong, I get to know where to correct. But if you keep quiet, then I won't be able to know where to correct. You understand? Yeah, so it's better to give me an answer, at least, at least what you have in the head, so that at least I can rectify that. Yes, my brother. Uh -huh. Explain for me the process of DNA replication. Mm -hmm. To make a copy of itself. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. Uh -huh. I saw the hand. Uh, you talking about how DNA takes place? Yes. Uh, that would be summarized. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, ones between the natural resources, they break. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a template strand. Do you put on a jeans? Do you like jeans? No? How do you put it on? <coughs> up, bottom to up, ne? And then when you want to remove it? Down, ne? Like this, ne? You don't tie any wire or zip up somewhere. What happens? What happens when you zip up? It closes. What happens when you zip down? Ne? When you zip down? You see, when you zip, what forms? You form two sides, each is complementary to each other. You see? When you zip down, when you zip down, this side is not exactly the same as this side, but is compatible, isn't it? So that's exactly when DNA replication occurs. So when DNA replication occurs, this is what you're supposed to do. So you have DNA, ne? You have, uh -uh. you have DNA. Remember, we say that. What is the natural shape of DNA? All those are questions we ask you in exam. What is the natural shape of DNA? Brainstorming, brainstorming. Natural shape of DNA? Two strands. Two strands, uh -huh. double helix. DNA is double helix. We don't want any other word. The only word you want to hear is double helix. Don't say helical, we don't want to hear those things. It's double helix. Is it clear? So now, it's double helix. What does the word double helix mean? This thing is called helical. Isn't it? I have another helical. Since they are two, they are double. 
Isn't it? Ne? Because they are forming that helical shape, therefore we describe it as double helix. Is it clear? So now, when we say DNA double helix unwind, what happens? It means that some of you, you have, yes, your, your hair, if you look at the, the one you have made, ne? they are twisted. Ne? If you want to remove them, you, what do you do? You untwist them. Is that it? That's exactly what DNA does. So, this double helix DNA, it unwinds. When it unwinds, it looks like that. Don't confuse the difference between unwinding and unzipping. Because those are two different things. When you unwind, you are like this. You unwind. Ne? But the bonds between the two strands are still there. So you saying DNA double helix unwind, we give you two marks there. DNA double helix unwinds. You see? Depending on the marking uh, guideline. You understand? Yes. So after that, you talk about the weak hydrogen bonds break. That's when you are busy pushing it down. You are unzipping. Do you understand? So when you unzip, it means that the bonds between the nitrogenous bases from one strand and another strand, they break. Is it clear? So we shall say that the weak hydrogen bonds break or you can say that it unzips. It's the same thing. Ne? So it means that after that, you're going to find DNA looks like this. It looks like now, looks like that. You understand? Uh, take an example that, take an example that I have A, I have G, I have C, I have uh, A, I have T, I have uh, G, I have A, whatever. Ne? What do I have this side? A goes with T, uh huh, C, uh huh, G, uh huh, T, uh huh, A, A, A ne? Uh huh, C, uh huh, T. You see? So, this strand is not exactly the same as this, but this strand is complementary to this. Do you understand now? Yes. yes. DNA double helix, it unwinds. It looks like this. After unwinding, the weak hydrogen bonds break. It looks like this. What do you form when they break? What do you form? You form what? Two complementary strands. Okay. <laughs> What do you form? Two, Two complementary strands. Two, Two templates. Okay, thank you. You form two separate. First service. You form two separate strands. Don't say two strands. That word is separate because it could be two strands, but they are not separate. You understand? You form two separate strands. We want to see that word separate. If you don't put it there, eh, we might not give you a mark. Ne? Yes. You form two separate strands. Uh -huh. All right. Now, remember, I want to form DNA, of which DNA is supposed to have two strands, isn't it? It means that each strand must act as a template. I see. You form two separate strands. Now you say the word. Each strand is that word each is a marking point. If you don't write it, we don't give you a mark. That word, I repeat, that word each is a what? Is a marking point. You form two separate strands, each acting as a template. Is it clear? Uh -huh. When you form now two separate strands, each is acting as a template. What do you use to form this DNA? So, if you say template, ne? what does what template mean in layman's language? Because we will be talking about template, 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 but what does it mean? Uh, do you understand when I say template? Uh, what clicks into your mind? Uh -huh. You don't know how to explain it. But do you understand when I say template? Yes. What comes into your mind? Strand. Strand. <laughs> One original strand. One original strand, eh? Okay. 
uh -huh. girls i think this is common do you check yourself in the mirror every day what do you see in the mirror huh? you see your, yourself oh but are you sure you're inside the mirror it's a reflection eh? good good so the template will be there acting as a mirror so a reflection of it is formed do you understand that's the meaning so it means that in Roman don't write it in exam like that it's a mirror uh -uh. I'm just explaining so that you understand better you understand and if you check in the mirror it's not exactly the same because when you close the left it closes the right you understand so that's exact meaning that you the picture in the mirror and you you are just complementary left leg right leg you understand if you look at the shoe they are the same but they're not exactly the same because one is left if you put the left in the right it won't fit isn't it so meaning that they are complementary do you understand now so a template looks like a mirror so now it means that each strand is going to act as a template meaning that each strand is going to act as a mirror so that an image is formed there uh -huh. do you understand now all right let's look at it remember a goes with t and then g goes with c cool uh -huh. now a complementary strand is gonna form on each template isn't it whereby adenine goes is gonna go with thymine guanine is gonna go with cytosine what does it use it uses free floating dna nucleotides listen carefully uses free floating dna nucleotide because if it's dna replication we call it free floating dna nucleotide if it is transcription it uses free floating rna nucleotide so what you are forming is are, are the nucleotides which you use is it clear uh -huh. so now let's show you let me show you something which i need you to see critically so a goes with t c goes with g g goes with this uh -huh. a goes with t t goes with a uh whatever ne? c and then this is t isn't it look look here there is something which you need to understand eh? yes because maybe you have been saying it but you don't know where it's derived from huh a goes with the t c g g with the c t uh -uh, a isn't it t uh-huh g and then a good uh-huh now this one becomes a strand okay uh -huh. it becomes a strand you see and then also this one becomes a strand isn't it in other words now i have one dna and another dna isn't it let me say dna one then dna two ne? if you look at dna one it has this strand you see it is original from up i think and then also has this strand which is new so it means that this dna which is formed it has one original strand and one new strand i think it even this one you have one dna strand which is original and one new strand you see so both they will have one uh, one original strand and one new strand have you seen it then we say that these two new dna they are genetically identical are they identical He's saying that these two new DNA are genetically identical. Are they identical? Yes. Someone is saying no, they are not identical. Let's find out. Let's find out. What do you have here? A. What do I have? I see. I see. And then this one? I see. are they genetically identical yes. yeah they are genetically identical so that's how dna replication occurs so you form two new dna which are genetically identical so in other words if you are asking you are asked to describe the process of dna replication how does it occur you see it is simple thing ne? but uh, don't make it complex for yourself ne? yes uh basically you say double helix dna unwinds 
ne c'est mac we can region bonds break a mac you understand to form two se to form two separate strands a mac ne each that word each each is acting as a template a mac are you saying then you talk about that um a compl complementary strands are formed you understand a mark whereby adenine goes with thymine and guanine goes with cytosine a mark are you seeing using free floating dna nucleotides from the nucleoplasm a mark you understand so we say that when you use free floating dna nucleotides from the nucleoplasm a complementary strand is what is formed whereby adenine goes with thymine and guanine goes with cytosine you understand so you form two new dna two new dna each with one original strand and one new strand are you seeing and then these two new dna are genetically identical they are genetically identical okay. is it clear